In this lecture, we're going to cover the paired samples t-test, which is part of the broader family of t-tests and part of a broader family of analyses aimed at comparing means. So we'll start with an overview of what a paired samples t-test is, and then we'll go over the statistical assumptions of a paired samples t-test, and then we'll move on to talking about statistical significance and practical significance in the context of a paired samples t-test. So let's start with that overview. So a paired samples t-test is used to determine if the mean difference between two sets of scores on a continuous outcome variable is different from zero. So we're comparing two sets of scores here, and if you were to compare three or more sets of scores, you would need a different type of analysis. So with a paired samples t-test, we're comparing just two sets of scores on a continuous outcome variable, and whether or not the difference um, between those two sets of scores is different from zero. Now this analysis is sometimes referred to as a repeated measures, a dependent samples, or within subjects t-test. And in fact, there's another variation that's called a matched pairs design that also has some similarities as well. So let's talk about some different ways in which and different reasons that we might run a paired samples t-test. So let's imagine, since this is a human resource management class, that we have a sample of employees. And let's imagine that those sample of employees get assessed at two time points on the same measure. So maybe this is a measure that is a pretest and a post-test measure, same measure just given at two different time points, and let's imagine that there's a training program in between the administrations of these two measures. So in other words, we have outcome variable measured at time one and an outcome variable at time two. What's important to remember here though is that it's the same sample or the same group of employees are completing the outcome variable measure at both time points. This creates dependency in their responses. So what that means is that no longer do we have an independent group of people who are completing the time one and another separate group of people who are completing time two. These are the same people completing both outcome variable measures at both time points. Okay, and so what we're interested in here is the mean of the differences. So you can imagine that we could take each person's outcome variable measure score at time two and subtract from that their outcome variable measure score at time one, which creates a difference score. And so what we're interested in is the mean of the differences between these two sets of scores significantly different from zero. And what we might be interested in testing in this particular scenario is there actually a significant increase in scores from time one to time two or a decrease or whatever it is that you're expecting to find. Let's consider another scenario in which a paired samples t-test would be appropriate. So let's imagine we have the same or a similar sample of employees. Now let's imagine that that same group of employees is going to rate two different targets, target one and target two. Now target one might be they're rating their supervisor in terms of satisfaction, their level of satisfaction with their supervisor, and target two might be that they're rating their coworker in terms of their level of satisfaction with that coworker. Now, What's important to remember here and important to note is that it's the same group of employees are making ratings of the supervisor and ratings of the coworker. And so similarly, we can look at the mean of the differences and determine whether the mean of the differences between these two scores are significantly different from one another. These are dependent outcome variable scores now because we're having the same group of employees assess two different targets. So there's dependencies in their responses. Their responses, in other words, are not independent of one another. So let's consider a third scenario here where we have a sample of employees. This time, however, this sample of employees is being rated by two different raters. Let's imagine rater one is supervisor one and rater two is supervisor two. And so now what we're interested in is, is there a difference in how rater one rates the sample of employees versus how rater two rates that same sample of employees. And so we'd create all the difference scores and then we're interested in is the mean of those difference scores significantly different from zero. And again, this is what we can assess using a paired samples t-test. So what are the statistical assumptions of a paired samples t-test? Well, the assumptions of a paired samples t-test are as follows. The different scores are independent of each other, suggesting that the cases are randomly sampled from the underlying population. In this particular example that we're using, cases would represent employees. Now the second assumption is that the different scores based on the outcome variable have a univariate normal distribution in the underlying population. 
So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here's that assumption of the univariate normal distribution. So we have all those different scores that we've computed. So let's say it's time two scores minus time one scores for each individual in our sample. And so that creates a series of different scores. We want those different scores to be normally distributed. And here, using a histogram, we can see what appears to be a relatively normal bell-shaped distribution here. So again, this would illustrate visually that the different scores based on the outcome variable show a univariate normal distribution. So this is how we would meet that particular assumption. Now, let's move on and talk about statistical significance in the context of a paired samples t-test. So when we're talking about statistical significance, we're talking about null hypothesis significance testing in this context. And so using null hypothesis significance testing, we interpret a p-value that is less than 0.05 to meet the standard for statistical significance, meaning that we reject the null hypothesis that the mean of the different scores is equal to zero. Now, we're using that cutoff value of 0.05, which is our alpha level. This is what we're using for this class. However, you could also use 0.01 or whatever else that you might think is appropriate. Um, but 0.05 is a fairly conventional cutoff, and here let's assume that it's a two-tailed test. Now, if the p-value associated with the t-value is equal to or greater than 0.05, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis that the mean of the different scores is equal to zero. So if we fail to reject the null hypothesis that the mean of the, equal, of the different scores is equal to zero, it means that we can't conclude that there's any difference here. In other words, we fail to conclude that there's the, there's any significant differences between these two sets of scores. Now, if we do in fact reject the null hypothesis because that p-value is less than our conventional alpha cutoff of let's say 0.05, then that means that we're essentially saying that we find a statistically significant difference here. The mean of the differences is statistically significantly different from zero. Now, in addition, we could construct 95% confidence intervals, which are the equivalent of a p-value set to 0 .0, or of alpha value set to 0 0.05. And if the 95% confidence interval for the mean of the different scores does not include zero, which is our null hypothesis value, then we can include statistical significance. Now, if it does include zero, so that confidence interval that we find includes zero, then that means that we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we would not conclude that there's a statistically significant mean of the differences or that the mean of the differences is not statistically significantly different from zero. Okay, so let's work through a specific example, this time in the context of training. So in the context of human resource management training evaluation, we might use a paired samples t-test to determine whether the same group of employees' initial test scores improved after they received training. So the idea being that you give them a pretest before they go into training. The pretest is assessing that something that you're expecting them to learn during training. So you're getting a baseline, they go through the training, and then presumably your goal, or you're hoping to find that after the training, people's scores improved when they take the post-test. So in this example, we have a sample of employees. The entire sample of employees takes the pretest. Then they engage in some type of new training program. And then they take the post-test, which is exactly the same as the pretest is just administered at time two as opposed to time one or baseline. And so this is a pretest, post-test without control group design here in terms of training evaluation. So using this example, we can see that there are relatively continuous outcome variable here, which is the pretest and the post-test. So by continuous, I mean that in terms of measurement scale, it's an interval or ratio measurement scale. Now, what we're interested here is for each person, if we take their post-test score minus their pretest score and then do that for the entire sample of people, is the mean of those different scores significantly different from zero? And so this is what we can test using statistically using a paired samples t-test and the associated t-value and p-value. Now, remember here that because we're doing null hypothesis significance testing, we're actually testing whether we're going to reject or fail to reject that null hypothesis. And remember, the null hypothesis, we're assuming that there is no mean difference in terms of these scores. So let's assume that the null hypothesis is zero as indicated in this visual here. So the null hypothesis is that the mean of the difference is a zero. In other words, there is no difference between the pretest and the post-test scores is essentially what we're saying. Now, if there is still, if there are some differences, but there's no appreciable difference between the mean of the differences and zero, then we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. And so we would not conclude that there's a statistically significant difference. And we would determine this by looking at our p-value. 
Now, if the mean of the differences we observe is large enough, we would reject the null hypothesis. And so another way of looking at this would be to conceptualize it as follows. So on the x-axis of this plot, we have the pre-test or before training assessment or test that we give people. And then we also have the post-test or after training assessment or test that we give them. And then the y-axis is the level of scores that they receive on that particular training outcome, which is the test in this context. And so here we might see that we do see an increase perhaps from the pre-test to the post-test with the training in between. And so then the question becomes, is this mean difference statistically significant? And so this is where our paired samples t-test, the associated t-value, and the associated p-value would come into play. Using that p-value, we would determine whether or not there is a statistical difference. Now, if the p-value, again, is less than 0.05, which is a conventional cutoff with, that we might use, then we conclude that, yes, that mean differences or the mean of the differences is statistically significantly different from zero, whatever that might be. Okay, so now let's move on to talking about effect size and practical significance. So we've talked about statistical significance, and let's assume that you do find a statistically significant effect or difference. The question then becomes, well, how big of an effect is that? Or practically speaking, how significant is this? How meaningful is this finding? So a t-value by itself does not, is not directly interpretable in terms of magnitude. In other words, we can't compare t-values from different assessments very easily or directly. So instead, we compute something called a Cohen's d often, which is a standardized mean difference. And a Cohen's d is an example of an effect size. And we use this Cohen's d to compare the magnitude of the difference in means. And we can use this to then compare that magnitude of the difference in means from this study or this sample to one of another sample or study. So an effect size is an index of the quantitative relationship between variables, and it's standardized, again, which means that we can compare it. Now, one of the great things about effect sizes is that we can start describing the size or the magnitude of our effects, which an effect is an association or difference or whatever it is that you're investigating. We can, we can describe them qualitatively. So Cohen, for instance, offered some very general rules on categorizing effect sizes when working with human or social data, and those are that a small effect would be a Cohen's d of about 0.2, which is the absolute value. A medium effect would be a Cohen's d of about 0.5. Again, that's the absolute value. And a large effect would be a Cohen's d of about 0.8. Again, that's the absolute value. And so again, we can describe the effect and how large it is. And really, in terms of what's going to be small, medium, and large, that'll depend on the specific context. But Cohen, Cohen's rules of thumb do offer a nice guidance in terms of, generally speaking, what would be a small, medium, or large effect. So in this lecture, we discussed and described what a paired samples t-test is. Again, it's part of the larger family of analysis that's used to compare means. And if you recall too, a paired samples t-test is also specifically used to compare means that are dependent, or score two sets of scores that are dependent in some way. And so we use the example in this lecture of a pre-test, post-test design with no control group. And so you have the same group of employees going through taking the pre-test, doing the training, and then taking the post-test. So there's dependency between how they respond to the pre-test and compared to how they respond to the post-test. Now, we also describe the statistical assumptions that need to be met, as well as statistical significance and practical significance in the context of a paired samples t-test. So this wraps up the lecture on paired samples t-test.